My bike of choice is the Canyon Talk On, and it just so happens I got a new one. Very much a revamped talk on paper, but how much of a transformation has it undergone? Has it really changed that much? And if so, how and why? Long travel, full suspension, full power e-mountain bike. It just makes sense to me. Feels like a match made in heaven. Call it EDH, E-Freeride, E-Super Enduro. It doesn't matter. It's an uplift killer. Bearing in mind the aluminium version is still available. So how different is the CF version? Let's have a look on paper, shall we? So I've been ripping around on the Canyon Talk AL9 for a little while now, and I jumped on it and I felt right at home, which is cool. So it's running 27 and a half inch wheels, front and rear. It's got 180 travel up front, 175 on the back. It's an EP8 motor with a 504 watt hour battery, full aluminium frame, and all comes in around 23 kilos. Roll in the CF9. Now this is quite a different looking animal. So there's a few things on this. So it's got a brand new frame design, quite obviously. It's a full carbon frame. It's running 29 inch front wheel, 27 and a half inch rear wheel. It's got 180 travel up front and 175 rear, exactly the same as the other one. Running an EP8 motor paired with either a 720 watt hour battery or a 900 watt hour battery. And it comes in about 23 and a half kilos, which is impressive for a bigger bike with a bigger battery than the aluminium. So what's the talk AL all about then? It's a super playful gravity style bike. It's supremely easy to get off the ground, largely down to the suspension design, which Canyon really know how to deliver on. It's very much a bike park bike. It's a gravity style bike. The wheel size means it handles in a certain way, but it's, it's just different to MX. The aluminum frame means it's got a certain compliance and you've got the shortest chain stays for diving into those corners. These are totally different bikes. All they share is a name. Canyon have tried to take the bike to a next level. It's now very much a long travel free ride e mountain bike. You no longer have to be close to the car park or a charging point. The frame weight comes in around 3.4 kilos when previously it was about 4.9 kilos. It's got radically different geometry with updates to the seat angle, the chain stay, the wheelbase, the reach, and the BB. And as you can see, the frame design has been completely overhauled. So the center of gravity has been lowered for several reasons. One being the suspension layout and the other being the BB height. But the suspension design itself hasn't radically changed since the launch of the sender. A sensitivity at the start, support in that mid section, and really good bottom out control for this big G outs. The leverage rate has actually stayed the same as previously, but just a few tweaks to the anti-rise and anti-squat. It was once a bike park bike, and that was mainly due to the battery. You know, you run a 500 watt hour in the morning and swap out for another 500 in the afternoon. And it's funny, some of the stock versions actually came with two batteries, but a model like this really diversifies your riding. You can do a lot more and still do the bike park without having to change your battery, you know? And if you're doing a major day out, you change it to a 900 watt hour battery, easy. Okay, well that's all very good and well, but how? different is this bike than the aluminium one. Well, there's only one way to find out, right? Boost and jumps, plow and bumps, that's what canyons say. I can only agree. What a bike, jeez. So let's get one thing straight here. Having that bigger battery has not compromised the handling at all. So the geometry has affected the handling too. Having the steeper seat angle gets you further forward, along with the longer chain stays makes a difference. It gives you a more rounded feeling on the ups and the downs, with a longer wheelbase in general to give you that stability on descents. It's definitely more confident at speed, and you've got so much more space to move around with that extended reach. And what's great about having a bigger battery, and I mean great, is I can just do so much more. I can go further, explore different places, and I don't have to come back down and recharge, but 
Ah, we all know it's about smash and laps, right? So the changes to the suspension design, like the anti-squat and the anti-rise, really help it feel planted, especially through like braking bumps and all that chattery stuff, which to be honest, is pretty relatable being here at Bike Park Wales, because it's all quite chattery and braking bumpy. Um, but not only that, I think having the lower center of gravity and changing the frame design really helps a lot of facts of handling. But to be honest, the main thing is in those corners, you can really push into them. And not only that, it's it's got a much stiffer rear end, now it's carbon. So, I mean, for me, it's great for flicking and whipping. So a couple of Scandi flicks and having the mixed wheel size, especially the 29 front, just kind of helps roll over some of those sort of chattery braking bumps or some of those sort of rutted holes. But I think what's quite interesting is having the mixed wheel size kind of pitches you back. So on super stuff, it's even more confident, keeps the front end up higher. There's a few little extras that Canyon have really thought about on this bike. They've added a rear fender that's bolt on, which is a great little extra, along with some great frame protection, including an awesome chain stay protector and seat stay protector, along with a really easily removable battery. So it's just two 5mm Allen key bolts and the whole thing slides out the bottom. They've also got what I like to call my little hydration station. Now, it's a 650ml bottle, it's great. So Canyon grade their frames as far as their strength, and Canyon have graded this one a 5E. Now, what does 5E mean? Well, put it in perspective, the sender is a category 5 frame. Now the question I have for you lovely people is, considering the nature of the torque on has changed, in my eyes, a fair bit, Category do you see it in? I know we don't like to categorize, but do you see it as a free ride, DH, super enduro? I'd love to hear it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll see you next time, and away.